Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get started. My name is Mamatha Kella, and today I'm going to um, talk a little bit about a pilot project I worked on with um, Tom Colson, who works at Great Smoky Mountains, Great Smoky Mountain National Park. Um, so those of you who heard Nate's talk, we work on the um, NP map team, and we're responsible for coordinating web mapping across the Park Service, and we also do a lot of custom um, web map and application development. Um, in our projects, we use um, a variety of base maps, including um, Bing, Google, this is not what I wanted. I'm in presentation mode, so I can't see my slides for some reason. Um, so we use Bing, Google, um, ESRI, and um, Mapbox space maps. And um, here I just took a screenshot of an area um, with all these maps in Crater Lake National um, Park, an area that, based on looking at one of our Harper's Ferry, Harper's Ferry Visitor Center maps, looks like it's something that's visited, or that has a lot of stuff going on in it. And um, you can see that all four of these maps vary in terms of roads. Um, so, really, like which one, which one do you, um, which one do you know is right? You don't really. Um, so, and then over the past like year or so, we've really been switching our um, public-facing applications over to the Mapbox space maps, and we're doing that for um, a few reasons. First of all, we use Tile Mill for um, all of our web map design. And um, these base maps, what we found is they're really fast and reliable. And we have um, stylistic control over them, as well as we can uh, reorder the components of them based on a given project. So as many of you know, I'm sure you've heard that uh, the Mapbox base maps are derived from OpenStreetMap data. And um, now, since they're using the vector tiles platform, the updates that are made to OpenStreetMap are um, showing up on the map really fast. So um, you know, this is a great opportunity for us to contribute data to OSM, which will improve the Mapbox base maps that we use, as well as our own base map. So about our own base map, um, we are currently working on a um, National Park Service styled base map called uh, Park Tiles. And as Nate explained, the data situation at the Park Service um, varies. I guess, like, for, for my talk, the most important thing to remember is that right now we don't have a centralized database from which we can pull um, detailed park data. So as we zoom in on this map, we're not really, um, we don't really have the data right now to show the detail. And um, another thing is that we're, we are using this map a lot in um, our small scale projects, but our ultimate goal with this is to kind of get it to be something that visitors can use as well um, when they go visit parks. Uh, so last year at State of the Map, I showed um, this prototype of Mount Rainier National Park using all uh, raw OSM data. And um, I don't think Clifford's here, but he contributed all this data. And the problem with this, as Nate explained too, is that um, the data have not been vetted by the NPS. And so if there's a trail here on Mount Rainier that um, is closed or actually doesn't exist, and we give this map to somebody to use and they get hurt, then um, we're going to be in trouble. Um, <clears throat> so about six months ago, we made uh, this road closure status application for um, Blue Ridge Parkway. And um, basically what this application is showing is a road closure status in the park. And you can click on a road or on a POI to get more information about its status. Um, the, the, the map component of this uses the map box terrain as the base and reference layers. Um, we're dynamically drawing in the road closure status using CardoDB. And um, we designed a custom overlay for points of interest and tile mill. So this uh, application has been extremely popular throughout the Park Service. We um, have a lot of parks that want this application for their park. And um, so one of those parks was Great Smoky Mountain. 
great Smoky Mountains National Park. And um, when Tom Colson showed it to the park management, um, they couldn't see the value of the application because, and they didn't want to deploy it because um, they were looking at the base map. They were looking at the data that was on the base map and saying, wait, that road doesn't exist, that trail doesn't exist, or you know, vice versa, that there is stuff in the park that's not showing up. So, um, so then we got this idea to um, do a pilot project with um, Great Smoky Mountain National Park, and this is Tom Colson. And Tom is the GIS and mapping manager um, for the park. So we basically wanted to come up with a methodology that we could share with other parks um, on how to update OpenStreetMap data, in turn update park tiles, and also update the map box space maps that we use so heavily. Um, so just a few interesting facts about Great Smoky. Um, it's actually America's most visited park. With They get 10 million visitors a year. So um, I didn't know that until, I, until Tom told me that. You think of other parks that probably have more visitors, but this is the most visited. Um, it's also an international biosphere. So um, there's like 4,000 plant species, 140 tree species, and it's home to a lot of um, black bears. And, um, and it's one of the only parks, national parks, that doesn't charge an entrance fee. Um, so for this pilot, we decided to focus on um, three of the most visited areas of the park, um, which are um, in order from your left, uh, Cades Cove, uh, the area Elkmont and the area around park headquarters. And um, we focused on four features, uh, roads, trails, points of interest, and buildings. And um, we also have updated hydro data, but we were asked by the um, So here's, uh, Tom did this really fast, like, so I didn't, I wasn't able to get a lot of before and after screenshots, but um, here's a screenshot of Elkmont, um, which is one of the areas of interest. And you can see I have the OpenStreetMap default base map and the um, Mapbox terrain base map up there. And both of these maps, you can see that this area is really kind of um, barren of data. And this was really similar with the other two areas in the park. I think Elkmont actually had the most because it had like two campsites, an RV and a campsite showing up. Um, so beget, before we began this pilot, we did um, a lot of research about the um, way that you import through OpenStreetMap. We followed all the steps. Um, Last year, Clifford, who just walked in, helped us um, set up a OSM tagging page. So it's basically matching um, OSM tags to National Park Service um, symbols. And uh, we've done some work on that. And also, um, Tom has written an extremely detailed uh, wiki page about this entire process. So we really made sure to follow all of the import rules. Um, in addition, for like some of the areas had trails and um, and Tom like he even went a step further by contacting the contributor and you know kind of explaining what we were thinking of doing and is it okay to um, replace your data with this kind of better data or this more up-to-date data that we have. Um, so this is just like the technical way that we did it, which actually was, um, Tom figured this out and, it, and he sh kind of shared this workflow with us and it's pretty simple. Like a lot of the parks uh, manage their data in GIS and Tom didn't really want to use the um, add-in for the OSM ArcGIS editor. He really liked using JOSM. So he just exported his data out into shapefiles, did the same thing with the OSM data brought it into, um, brought it all into JOSM, where he did, um, where he did the QA, QC of the data. He um, added a ton of uh, tags. He conflated the data. Um, he did a lot of work. And so everything that Tom has touched, verified, anything, we have um, added a tag of 
NPS verified equals yes. Um, and this, again, it's not a, t a tag that we've put through the official approval process. Um, we kind of wanted to come share this project with you guys and, um, you know, see if this is like kind of a good methodology that we're following. And so all that goes back into OpenStreetMap. Um, so like I said, I wasn't able to get screenshots of um, these areas before the edits, um, but I did download the, um, I think it was the May 1st extract from OpenStreetMap and just kind of styled it like we are styling our base map. So these are the roads before, and um, there, there's roads that don't exist, um, roads shown that don't exist, some are missing. Um, there were a lot of raw, wrong road names. There was no indication of one way, two way. Um, and so this is what that um, area looks like now. Um, updated to the current roads. And um, you can see that you know now it's one way, two way. Um, because the data are managed for GIS operations, they're topologically correct. So now these data can be used for routing. Um, and yeah, there it's NPS verified equals yes as the tag on these roads. And um, same for trails. Um, this was the old trail inventory from 2009. And Pretty much same situation with roads and trails. And also the trails had like a lot of nodes and um, there wasn't really a clear identification of trail type. And so um, this is Cades Cove and this is what the trails look like now. Um, yeah, so they're all current and up to date, named, um, the type is tagged, all of that. Uh, so like I showed you in that original screenshot, for points of interest, there wasn't really anything. In Elkmont, there was a campground and a RV station. Um, and so now this is what that area looks like in OpenStreetMap. So um, we've added and tagged all these points of interest, campgrounds, ranger stations, information centers, theaters, bike rentals, horse stables, um, and according to Tom and many park service, people that actually work in parks, the most important feature to show are restrooms. So those are all showing up um, in these areas. And um, same with buildings. There was uh, no buildings. So Tom um, added and tagged all of the buildings in these three areas as well. OK, so. Um, you know, like I said before, I showed you, you know, the different base maps that we use. And um, this was actually really interesting to me, for me to see. Um, this is a simple comparison application. Um, and if you look at some of these areas in the other base maps that we use, like Bing, um, for example, this is funny, and Tom kind of laughed about this, that in Bing, um, this is called Anthony Creek Road, but it's actually a trail. And so um, people, I guess, get, it's Anthony Creek Trail, so people get upset that um, they can't drive their car down there and ask him to open up the um, gate. <laughs> and, um, and then uh, we could look at Google, too, and we found that um, same thing with uh, the roads in these areas is just not as um, accurate as what it really is. And then even things like now, when you zoom in, in OpenStreetMap and Mapbox Maps and our map now, um, you have all the road names and um, everything. So with uh, buildings too, so this is um, kind of looking at Google again on the right and our map on the left. Um, if you zoom in uh, to Google, you don't get any buildings. You don't get a lot of information. So it's actually, it's, it's been like really eye-opening because I feel like a lot of people think that these are the base maps that are, um, that tell you what's really in a place and um, yeah, ends up not always. So, so we've done a lot of uh, improvements to OpenStreetMap and now if we look at um, something like the Mapbox space maps that we use, 
you can see that, you know, since they are doing these updates, that now they have all that information in their base maps, which we can now start using it in our applications and not worry about park management saying that, wait, I'm not seeing all these uh, features that are actually in the park. Um, okay. Okay, so our um, future work with this is now that we kind of have this uh, method figured out, we want to share it with other parks and see um, how many of these like updates we can do. And it's an interesting approach to take to kind of work on the most visited areas of the park. And we're not doing like these humongous imports. We're kind of doing it um, in, in small manageable chunks. And um, we currently have a, a transportation and trails project going on where we're collecting um, roads and trails data for 30 parks. And so, you know, if the community is okay with this methodology, because Tom has actually gotten a lot of um, backlash on the uh, import mailing list for what he's doing, but we really feel like we're kind of Im improving. Um, but we definitely are open to suggestions um, to know what we should be doing better. Oh, and I forgot, I wanted to um, get myself in trouble by showing you guys something that I was doing. Um, so in a lot of um, park service areas, there's uh, buildings that have um, multiple amenities. So for example, um, this building is a ranger station and an information center. And so for, for cartographic reasons, we've been tagging um, the nodes of the building. And from what I read on the uh, wiki, that's not a preferred method um, because we shouldn't be collecting data for uh, map design. But um, so if anybody has like another suggestion for handling something like that um, to the point where we could um, both show the POI symbols as well as label the building. Um, because if those two POIs were in the middle of the building, they would overlap each other and I wouldn't be able to get a label on my map. Um, and then also, since we've kind of come up with this unified um, tagging scheme, you can see that we're able to um, add information um, about the park in a more meaningful, multi-scale way instead of throwing everything on there at once. Um, since we have all our tags defined, we can, yeah, introduce the information in a better way. Um, so that's uh, what I have. Oops. And, oh, anyways, I had my contact slide at the end, but thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think like I um, learned more about that during this project and um, we're not taking anything out of OpenStreetMap, but like if you think of a place like Great Smoky Mountains, there's a reason that um, that's not a trail. And in that instant, or there's a reason that um, the Park Service doesn't want you to walk down a trail. For example, um, in Great Smokies, since it's this international biosphere, there's a lot of endangered species there. So the reason that they ask people not to go on certain trails is to protect those endangered species and to not um, you know, cause more damage than necessary in certain areas of the park. So if it's on OpenStreetMap, since we have tagged our data as NPS verified equals yes, 
that's the information that we're going to query out into our base map. Um, but we're not, we're not taking anything off of uh, OpenStreetMap if it's already on there. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So that's what we're kind of trying to do with that tag in some ways. And we know people can change it and everything. But um, if we feel like, you know, as long as we're upfront about what we're doing, we're hoping that people will just be OK with um, knowing that if you want a trails map of the park service, of good managed trails that you can go on, you can definitely find them on this map. Yeah. Um, well, I don't, I'm not sure about state parks, but for national parks, yes, we've gotten um, a lot of interest. And um, actually, Craig Scott, who's here from Golden Gate National Recreation Area, so that's all the parks in the San Francisco area. I think that's going to be the next kind of um, pilot to go through this methodology. Clifford. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> okay, talk dash us dot mps dash. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? All right, thank you.